Greetings from the great state of Alaska. My name is Dr. G, and today I want to share with you a message of hope. We're going to be looking at Psalm chapter 50 today, the first half of Psalm chapter 50. You know, this psalm is simply titled, A Psalm of Asaph. Asaph, he was a Levite, and he was also a worship leader appointed by King David. And so as we begin today, we're going to look at verses 1 through 3, Psalm chapter 50, verses 1 through 3. And I'm going to be reading from the NIV today. <clears throat> it says, The Mighty One, God, the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to the place where it sets. From Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and will not be silent. A fire devours before him, and around him a tempest rages. And so Asaph, he, he starts off this psalm with, with really a majestic introduction to God. He says, El. Elohim, Yahweh. Now we translate it the Mighty One, God, Lord. But when he says El, that implies God's sovereignty over the earth. When he says Elohim, it signifies God's great wisdom. And when he says Yahweh, it implies God's grace extended to mankind. El, Elohim. Yahweh. You know, the, the divine attributes of God, they're, they're more than we can number on paper. But this introduction of God is a welcome prelude to what's coming. And I'll tell you, what's coming is the judgment of God upon the earth. And so Asaph, he, he makes a divine introduction here, a majestic introduction of our God and we know from these three verses that judgment will commence in Zion, or Jerusalem. And that's according to the scripture. Asaph's introduction or description of, God, it, of God's arrival, it also includes a devouring fire and a raging tempest. A devouring fire and a raging tempest. It's important to point out here that Asaph, he's not just a Levite and a worship leader, he's also a prophetic psalmist. And so much of what we're reading here is very prophetic in nature, and in, in one sense, messianic prophecy. And so let's look at verses 4 through 6. It says, he summons the heavens above and the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me my consecrated ones who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens proclaim his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Selah. You know, these verses, they tell us that God's judgment will begin with his people. And his judgment isn't just limited to his Jewish people. <laughs> his judgment includes judgment over all his people who have entered into covenant with God. And today, if you're a born-again Christian, if you profess faith in Christ, you have entered into a covenant with God. That's why when we look at the Bible, we see Old Testament, New Testament. You know, that word testament, it just means covenant. We have a covenant with God. I think it's interesting. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17, it says, For it is time for judgment to begin with the family of God. It is time for judgment to begin with the family of God. You see, judgment 
begins with those who have placed their faith in Christ. It begins in the house of God, and that's according to the Bible. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, it says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. For we must all. All means all, and that's all all means. <laughs> we will all appear before Christ. Every one of us will appear before Jesus, and he will be our judge. Not our friends, not our co-workers, not our neighbors, but Jesus Christ, he will judge us. Let's look at verses 7 through 13. Hallelujah. It says, Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, and I will testify against you. I am God, your God. I do not rebuke you for your sacrifices or your burnt offerings which are ever before me. I have no need of a bull from your stall or of goats from your pens, for every animal of the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand hill. I know every bird in the mountains and the creatures of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine and all that is in it. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? And so judgment, as we see in the scripture here, judgment, it starts with God speaking. Judgment starts from the mouth of God. God says, I am God, your God. You see, it's important to God that he recognizes us. It should be important to us that we recognize God. If God says, I'm your God, we should be able to look up to God and say, you're my God. In other words, we should make it personal. You know, this reminds me of Exodus chapter 20. In Exodus chapter 20, God gave his people the Ten Commandments. And in verse 2 of Exodus chapter 20, God says, I am the Lord, your God. I am the Lord, your God. You see, when you enter into covenant with God, he becomes your God. He becomes your Lord. He becomes your Savior. <laughs> and you become his servant. You become his child. Amen. In this passage of Scripture, in Exodus chapter 20, we see God's people identified, connected to God through covenant. And then when we look at Psalm chapter 50 and we see this judgment coming upon God's people, what we see is God's people as being very religious. They're good at bringing burnt offerings and sacrifices. They're really good at that. They're punctual. They're consistent. They're good at the religious stuff, the rituals, the ceremonies. But their relationship to God is lacking. Their relationship with God is not what it should be. You see, they've elevated religion above relationship. And that's a problem. It's especially a problem on Judgment Day, as we see in this passage of Scripture. You know, it was a problem for the Pharisees when Jesus made his first visit to earth. They were very religious, the Pharisees. They were concerned with how they looked on the outside. But on the inside, Scripture tells us they were full of dead men's bones. You know, that religion problem, it's still a problem today. People forget that Jesus Christ died on the cross to bring them into a relationship with God. They forget that very important part, that Jesus, he formed a bridge from man to God. Let's look at verses 14 and 15. Hallelujah. Psalm chapter 50, 
verses 14 and 15. Sacrifice thank offerings to God. Fulfill your vows to the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you. Hallelujah. I will deliver you and you will honor me. I'm going to read that one more time. This is good advice. Sacrifice thank offerings to God. Fulfill your vows to the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. You see, when we enter into a covenant relationship with the Lord and we make a vow, Oh Lord, I will take up my cross and follow you. God doesn't take that lightly. And neither should we. We need to step up to the plate. We need to fulfill our vows. If we're not being all that we said we would be, if we're not doing all that we said we would do, if we're not keeping our vows, we need to get on our knees before God. You see, God is looking at your heart. He's looking at your heart today. And because he's looking at your heart, he knows your motive. At the end of the day, God is looking for people who love him. And you can't love him if you don't have a relationship with him. You can't love him by being religious. You know, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, it says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. You know, I want to close today. Like I said, we're not going to read the whole chapter. I want to close today by asking you a couple of questions. Do you have a personal relationship with God? And when I say personal, I'm simply restating what the Scripture says. Can you honestly say, my God? He is my God. I know Him. I talk to Him in the morning. I talk to him throughout the day. In the night season, I talk to him. When I lay my head down on the pillow, I'm thinking about him. Can you honestly say he's my God? You see, God has no grandchildren. He only has sons and daughters. <laughs> Jesus Christ, he, he left his place in glory. Amen. He left his place in glory. He came to planet earth to bring us into a relationship with God the Father. John chapter 1. John chapter 1 verses 10 through 13. This is important. This is talking about Jesus. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet, to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, not grandchildren, but children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord, for making a way for us to be adopted into your family, God. You know, today you can enter into a personal relationship with God. You can be born of God, just like that scripture says. You can be born of God by placing your faith in Christ. By placing your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ. And, and so today I want to invite you to pray this prayer with me. And invite Jesus into your life. Dear Lord, I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I have a sin problem and there's no solution to it. But I believe 
that Jesus, you came to this earth. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And that your blood washes away all my sins. I believe that you tasted death for me on that cross. And I also believe that when you died, three days later you rose from the dead victorious over the grave. And so today, Lord, I receive you as my Savior. I receive you. I receive the grace that you made available to me through the work you did on the cross of Calvary. And I confess today that you are my Lord and my Savior. You are my Lord and my Savior. I am here to serve you from this day forth. I will live my life and honor you. I will keep my vow. And I will follow you, Jesus, wherever you lead me. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit and lead me and guide me and teach me and walk with me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You know, if you prayed that prayer today, You've been adopted into the family of God. You've been born of the Spirit. You are now a child of God. And it doesn't matter what the devil says. It doesn't matter what the enemy says. Because the Bible says that the devil is a liar. And so you can't believe anything he says. The Bible also says that he's the accuser of the brethren. So when he viciously accuses you and attacks you, you just tell them who you are. You say, I'm a child of God. I've been purchased by the blood of the Lamb. I've been saved and born again. I'm on a path that leads to heaven. And Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. He will protect me. And you tell Satan where to go. I pray today that your walk with the Lord is powerful. And that faith grows in you each day. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you today for your word. I thank you, Lord, that you're not just our judge. But Lord God, you're also our Savior. And so Lord, when judgment day comes, we're going to be able to, to look up and say, I'm covered by the blood. Because Lord, it's not enough for us to be religious. It's not enough for us to follow daily rituals but lord we need a daily relationship with you we need a walk with you jesus and so lord i'm thankful today for the truth that's in your word i pray for any of those today that are watching and listening i pray that your holy spirit would just do a work in their life and lord if they've said the sinner's prayer today if they've been born of you i pray god that faith would rise up in them that they would feel that faith rise up in them and that they could walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, Lord, today we give you all the praise, Jesus. We give you all the glory, for you're a mighty God, and we love you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you.